Ah, I'll give you another example of a conviction. Uh, I believe uh, in uh, the King James Version. That's my conviction. I, I say that because out of all the different uh, translations, it seems to be the one that has the least amount of tarnish to me. That's my mind. The reality is there are a lot of different versions, and I love them all if they play a role in bringing clarity to the word of God. Your version might be the English Standard Version, the ESV. That's a conviction. We don't lose sleep over it. That may be a personal conviction. Uh, that's a personal choice. Uh, however, essentials are non-negotiable. They are things such as the Holy Spirit is absolutely necessary to be saved. The fact that you must be born again by the water and the spirit, according to the word of God, that you can live life uh, comfortably in sin if you've been born again. Did you hear what I said? You can comfortably live a life of sin if you're born again. Why? Because 1 John chapter 3 verse 9 says, He that is born of God does not practice sin because the seed of God remains in him and he cannot continue to practice sin because he's born of God. What is the point I'm making? I'm making the fact that when the Holy Spirit comes into your life and you have these subconscious thoughts that may help, that creates a blur. Remember I said the Holy Spirit will unblur, if that's a word, some of the things that are in your life. And you don't know the difference between a preference and a conviction or essential. How, how many know the Holy Spirit will make it clear? Hallelujah. He will give you clarity of thought and accuracy of speech. He will do things that you never thought were possible simply because you have a covenant relationship with him. You have a divine relationship with him that's been ordained by God. But it's a relationship that, that the root word of relationship is relation. There has to be a connection. And that's twofold. That's him and you. When you abide in me and my word abides in you, you can ask whatever you will in my name. And I will do it. Why? Because whatever you ask in his name, when you have a relationship, what you ask for is what he wants for you. And one of the things I can clearly tell you that your God wants for you is to get rid of these weights and the sins that so easily beset you and run this race with endurance, looking unto Jesus. Because he's the author and the completer, the finisher of your faith. And giants that are inhibiting your progress is not God's will for your life. Hallelujah. God's word is just to help you understand, just to give you a little more clarity. God's word is more important than preferences or convictions. Why did I say that? Because somebody might have a conviction to, to, give, to, do, to get vengeance on somebody by killing them. That's your conviction. Because somebody killed your loved one and so you want to get back. No, no, no. Convictions must be uh, centered in God's promises in God's word and the only way that you know the difference between a preference and a conviction and an essential is to know the word of God I said there are multiple benefits of having a having a covenant relationship with God and one of the things that that text says he said I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people you are now part of the family of God did you know that you're part of of a family that God has established from the foundations of the world. As God's child, child, you're part of his family. That this identity that you have with the people of God is more important than any other identity. Uh, I think John says it well in John chapter 1 verse 11. He said he came unto his own. He's talking about Jesus. But his own received him not. Meaning his own Jewish brethren. His own people. Get this now. But, in verse 12, as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, who were born not of bloodline. Hallelujah. You, you didn't come into this family of God because you, were, you, were, you had blue blood. Or you happened to be part of some European country that established your connection. 
No, that, that's not how. You, you didn't come into a connection with the family of God because your father was a pastor or your mother or your sister was an evangelist. That may have brought you into the presence of God, but that didn't establish a relationship in the family. Nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but by God. Hallelujah. That's how you establish the connection to the people of God. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, and when Paul talked to Timothy, he said, If I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou ought to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. We are the workmanship of God. That's what Ephesians 2 and 10 says. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath preordained that we will walk in. Look at this text, Ephesians chapter 122. I'm talking about the fact that you are part of a body, a body of believers that God said in his word that is undefiled. That, that it's a body of believers that will transform this world in which we live.